Good evening. I'm so glad that we're able to gather again on this Monday evening to hear more of the glory of Christmas as we've been following so far Mary and Joseph and their uh, theater background, shall we say, for this performance that this church is preparing. Tonight we're going to take a look at another key, um, uh, just a key actor, shall we say, who takes their job very seriously. We're going to be hearing the, the part of the shepherd. Tonight I want to encourage you to spend a few moments with me as we gather to hear God's word and to hear God speaking through others. Hi, my name is Pastor Adam Meller. I serve Culp and Roaring Creek Valley Churches, and I'm so glad that you're able to be here with us. I just want to share with you a, a few ad short announcements that I think are really important. First, I want to invite you personally to our Christmas Eve service online. That'll be December 24th, 2 o'clock. Uh, I really encourage you to join in for that online service. We want to hit over a thousand views for that service in less than 24 hours, so make sure you're sharing it after you viewed it or during viewing it so that others can see that service, the message of hope that we find in Christmas Eve. I also want to share with you a personal invitation to worship with us in person even. Uh, we are gathered together at Culp at 9 a.m. and Roaring Creek Valley at 10.30 a.m., and we would love to have you be part of of our community together as we seek God's truth and wisdom, even in these most uncertain times. So tonight our scripture is going to be based off of the story of the shepherd, but I'm not going to share that until after you're able to see the video, as we're going to see the part of the shepherd who takes things very, very seriously. So sit back, uh, grab a cup of coffee or hot cocoa, and let us again tonight hear about the story of the glory of of Christmas. This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play, and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The Glory of Christmas. I am the longest running cast member of the Nativity Ensemble of our church. Well, I don't like to mention it, but I am a formally trained prodigy of the theater arts. Having Dan as part of our cast is fantastic. Lord, I am surely blessed beyond measure. Okay, uh, okay, good. Uh, let's, uh, let's just, let's do it again, but this time with more emotion, okay? Hey, I want you to Meryl Streep this up, okay? Dan thinks he's helping, but all he does is compare everything to Meryl Streep. Tony, I need you to channel your inner Meryl. My dear Mary, stop. It is... Just, I need to Meryl this over for a minute. Oh, this is no way to treat your actors. Meryl would have seen this and walked immediately. Really, Dan? Because this potato salad looks so Meryl right now. Suddenly. The most splendiferous heavenly being appeared to my cohorts and me. Stick to the script, please. Okay, Joel, it's called the glory of Christmas. I think the shepherds deserve a little more poetic language, don't you think? It's the Bible, Dan. God may beg to differ with you. By day, I make a living as an accountant, but a dedicated one, but a dedicated actor must lose themselves and fully become the character. Right. Do you have any questions for me at all? Uh, what's that smell? Green pastures. Green pastures, Annette. I am so method. I haven't bathed in a month. You really need to take a bath. I can't. These shepherds were society's misfits, you know. They were, sure, transfixed by um, a, a choir of angels, but also amazed that God had chosen them. They were the scrawny kid in P.E., yeah. Uh, the, uh, the nerd who went alone to the prom, yeah. They were, um, they were the glee club president twice. Yeah. They were the least of these.
God asked me to be the keeper of the most important message that's ever been kept. To tell everyone that he sent the greatest gift ever, the Prince of Peace. The lowest in the land is given the highest honor. What's that smell? The shepherd took his job very, very seriously. Can you imagine being around him during his casting time? No shower, no deodorant, as he works in his job as accounting. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to share with you tonight uh, part of that true, uh, wonderful story of Christ, but also a scripture outside of the Christmas story that we find in the Gospel readings from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. I want to share with you something else God has to share about his callings on our lives. It says this, and this is Paul writing this, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We need to take our job just as seriously as that shepherd was uh, taking his job and our calling to ministry. All of us have been given callings to ministry in various aspects. Some of us have been given the gifts of, of hospitality and of comfort. Others have been given the hospitality of visioning and direction. Others have been given the, the gift of comfort and healing in days of, of difficulty. Whatever your challenge or difficult, might, difficult uh, life circumstances might be, God meets us in those and is able to offer us hope and peace through the Nativity story, and throughout God's presence and promise through the Old and New Testament. We need to hold to these truths, especially in these days of challenge, knowing that God is in all and through all and with us in all sorts of circumstances, guiding us and directing us. Notice, Scripture says that we each have a different part to play, but that we are united together as all. In other words, Though we are different members of the same body, we work in unison together for the glory of God. That means, brothers and sisters, that though we are different, we are called to unity. I want you to hear that word in 2020. We are called to unity, to be gathered together as the body of Christ, reaching out to share the hope, peace, joy, and love that we find in the baby wrapped in a manger. That is something that we can celebrate today and every day. I want to ask you this evening, what have you been called to do for God this week? You can comment it in the comment section. I'd love to be able to uh, read those and see how God is at work in your life. But I want to ask you to sincerely look within your heart and your mind and your soul to how God is calling you to his critical work here on this earth. I am a firm believer that God has designed us and made us for a time such as this, that we do have gifts that have equipped us for this pandemic, talents that we are able to share for God's glory that bring us closer together in unity with one. Christ. Brothers and sisters, continue in this work. Find those gifts. If you're not sure who what your gifts are, comment that in the feed, and I bet someone will tell you what their gifts are. Maybe yours is a gift of bad timing while the clock is chiming at night, so I'll talk over it so you can't hear a word that I've said. But I want you to be encouraged, brothers and sisters, because <clears throat> the time is now. 
for us to unite together in this Advent season to let Christ's light shine through us, that we can be illumined from the inside out, just as our homes are illumined from the inside out with the gift and the light of Christmas trees and candles and decorations. That is something that just can't be meriled out. Would you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, we thank you that you have called each of us to various tasks and gifts and talents that we are able to use for your kingdom. We pray that you would encourage us to use those talents here and now for your glory and honor. God, we pray that you would be with us in this week, that you would grant us the strength and knowledge and wisdom that we need to get through what could be another challenging week, but we know, God, that you are with us in this time. God, we pray that you would be with our hospital workers. We pray that you would be with our schools and school teachers and support staff. We pray that you would be with our nation and with our world, that you would unite us together until every knee has bowed and every tongue has confessed you as Savior and Lord. We pray this all in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Don't forget about our Christmas Eve service that is next Thursday evening at 2 p.m. online, and then we will have in-person worship at this point for Christmas Eve, and that will be at 5 p.m. at Culp Church and 7 p.m. at Roaring Creek Valley Church. We would love to have you there for that special time of celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. also want to encourage you this Sunday, December 20th, we'll gather at Culp at 7 p.m. for our service of the longest night, and you are invited to that as well. Uh, that will be streamed here live on Facebook. Uh, and it won't be on YouTube until afterwards, but it will be streamed live on Facebook. And it will also be uh, in an in-person at this point event as well. So we encourage you to come to this special time of worship as we prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of Christ. So with that, everybody, I wish you a wonderful and happy Advent. See you next time.